everybody, Marcos Vegas here having a, a little sit down interview with Mr. Bob Arum, the founder and promoter of Top Rank. And Bob, we're here in Los Angeles. You have uh, this Bradley Pacquiao card, but you also have it stacked with a, a lot of rising talent on the undercard as well. I know you mentioned your reasoning as to why you're stacking it the way you have, but tell me, when going into a, a big promotion and a big fight like this, how long does it really take to get all this done and really take me through the process? Well, once we made the fight, and then given what was happening in the country, uh, I told my guys I wanted to feature a Hispanic in every one of the fights, every one of the televised fights. And uh, so we went to our stable, and uh, obviously Gilberto was looking for a world title fight. And it cost us a little money, but we kept it from going to Germany. That fight was the mandatory fight that was going to happen anyway. And we secured that fight. Uh, Jose Ramirez came to me and said he wanted to be on the card, even if his fight wasn't a televised fight. And then the light bulb went off, and we said, okay, Jose is a great, great ticket seller. He's already sold. Uh, a lot of tickets for us out of that area. So we said that makes sense. And then we went to Frank and said, uh, hey, let's do a big fight for Oscar. It's great visibility. And he said, fine. So that was our, the, the, our thinking. The only other uh, Hispanic that we might have put on uh, was um, uh, Felix Ferdeo but uh, who is Puerto Rican, not Mexican, of course. But Ferdeo uh, is fighting the end of February, and it was too close. You know, he could get yeah. cut or something like that. In a historical context, from what you're hearing from those politicians, what are your commentaries on all that? Well, I'm appalled by what's being said by a lot of uh, the Republicans, particularly Donald Trump. Uh, but, you know, Cruz is not much better. Uh, I just think that uh, uh, it's terrible as an American to hear that type of hatred. Uh, Hispanics are very hardworking people. They contribute a lot to this country. Uh, those who are undocumented should have a path to being either documented so they can legally work here and eventually become citizens. I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, and these young men uh, that, uh, who are fighters, who are Hispanics, are by and large lovely people. I mean, so the, the vitriol against them is something that is not American. And I want Hispanics to know that. You know, there are people like myself who aren't Hispanic, who are appalled by what's going on. Speaking of Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley, it's the third time around. I know coming into the fight there were some other options, but overall the choice went to Bradley. The process of that, how long does it really take to put something like that together? Is it months? Is it weeks? No, we, you know, we make a couple of visits uh, to our uh, distribution partners and we ask them, frankly, which fights would do the best. And they are on the firing line. They have a better feel for it than we do because we look at it more like fight people and they look at it more as distributors, you know, who, yeah, who know, who, you know, it's, it's just like uh, movies. Generally, the theater owners, the theater chains, have a better view on which movies sell than a studio. On that topic, I know in interviews, you said that you knew you were going to get a, some slack on the choice of Bradley because Manny already fought him twice. What do you make of that and the ability to sell a, a third fight between these guys when people feel that Manny won both fights clearly and convincingly? Yeah. 
I knew, and I know, that, uh, may, that Timothy Bradley's a different fighter from the fighter that we've seen before. That Atlas has made tremendous improvements. And I know what a very exciting competitive fight this will be. And if people say, well, I already saw Pacquiao and Bradley twice, and I'm not interested in seeing it again, that's their choice. That's certainly their choice. I'm just telling them that it's going to be a different kind of fight because Bradley is a different fighter. You reached a milestone coming, uh, I think, I don't know if it's today exactly, but you've been promoting fights for March, 50 years March now. March 29th. March 29th. Uh, what are some of like the uh, weird things, demands, <laughs> that come from fighters when putting a, a fight together that you've come across over the years? Well, you know, fighters are no different from other entertainers. And they all have peculiarities. I remember we were promoting a fight uh, between uh, Roy Jones and I think his name was Gonzalez, uh, Julio. Julio Gonzalez in uh, the Staples. And Roy Jones wouldn't stay in Los Angeles overnight because he was afraid of an earthquake. Right? But we then told him that the Beverly Hills Hotel was on one level. So we convinced him to stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I can't see Roy being scared of earthquakes. <laughs> you, to, you talk to Roy. <laughs> you know, uh, this fight is being uh, said at, that it could be Manny Pacquiao's very la last fight. Do you remember the day when you first saw Manny and really what went on through your mind when you saw him? Yeah. I was doing a fight in San Francisco with um, uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. against uh, Chavez. Uh, and, oh, what was his first name? Jesus Chavez. And uh, HBO asked me to put on the card a fight that was being promoted by uh, Murad Muhammad, uh, Pacquiao against uh, Acapito Sanchez. And I agreed, and it was a horrible fight because Acapito kept fouling him. And I didn't think very much of, uh, uh, of uh, Pacquiao, and therefore, I was very happy to match Pacquiao with another fighter of mine, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. And I was shocked when Pacquiao knocked him down three times in the first round. Well, and you know, Pacquiao has grown on me and demonstrated what a terrific fighter he is. I asked Freddie this question. Uh, he told me a funny story about Manny, but what's like the... Uh one story that always pops out in your mind about Manny, it could be a funny one or a heartwarming one, but what's like the first thing that comes to mind? Well, you know, Manny Pacquiao, I had never seen anything like it once I started promoting him. All the people that would come uh, with him, uh, the hundreds of Filipinos that surround him, and how gracious he was to everybody. I mean, the fact that uh, you know, I would worry that they didn't have a room to sleep. And he told me not to worry, they'd sleep in his room on the floor. I mean, crazy. I never experienced anything like it. Changing subjects, there's a, a big fight coming up in Maine now. It took a, a lot of people by surprise. Mirkan versus Canelo Alvarez. What were your first initial thoughts? And do you feel that it is a fight that should be compared to a Pacquiao de la Hoya? No, it's not Pacquiao de la Hoya, because, I mean, the, the, the comparison Oscar wants to make is that de la Hoya and Pacquiao, de la Hoya was so much bigger than Pacquiao, and Canelo is so much bigger than Khan. But de la Hoya was at the end of his career. Canelo is at the peak, is his prime, so it's not very, di it's different. That doesn't mean that Khan won't give him a good fight. I don't know. But it's not the same. Do you feel that it's going to be sort of a, a one-sided fight, given the size? Look, you never know in a fight. The problem I have with that fight from Khan's standpoint is he's not that big a banger, and he doesn't have a good chin. Canelo's a strong kid. He's bigger. 
and he's going to hit Khan. And Khan hasn't shown me that he can take a good punch. But again, he might have a strategy that works, since you never know in boxing. Certainly Khan is a good talent, no question about it. He can box very well. But again, I just don't think he has the physical tools to stand up to Canelo. There's going to be a lot of fans that agree with your point of view. And finally, Bob, 26 years ago today, Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson in probably the uh, biggest upset in boxing history. Do you remember that day? And if you can, recall it for me. Well, I didn't promote that fight, but I, Don did, and uh, it was from Japan. And we were watching it uh, in a restaurant uh, in uh, Las Vegas, Pierro's, and Bruce Tramp, big screen, and Bruce Trampler was there. And Trampler said to everybody that he gave Buster Douglas a big chance to beat Mike Tyson. We thought he was crazy, but Trampler was the manager of Douglas's father. And he knew Douglas since he was a kid. And he thought that Douglas could beat Tyson. And so we weren't that shocked when it happened. We didn't believe Tramplin necessarily, or else we would have made 50 to 1, you know. We made some big bets. <laughs> right, which we didn't do. Bob, as always, thank you so much. I know I can go on hours with you uh, about stories. Bob Aram, Marcos Vegas here in Los Angeles.